Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to go ahead and set up our database model. For the previous video we created our different applications which were the authentication as well as the order the order application. So I'm going to go ahead and set up our database model. So right here I have a simple model of how our database is going to be. We're going to have two tables. We're going to have a user table which is going to be the table containing all the information that's going to be specific to the user accounts as well as the order table which is going to have the different information for every order. So right now we see that our user table is going to be a custom user model containing a username and email, a phone number and a password. It's also going to contain other extra fields as Django provides. Now the Django default authentication user model is kind of sufficient for most use cases but then in case we want to customize it we can build on top of it so that you create our own custom user model as we're going to see. Now we also have our order table which has the different fields such as the size, the order status, the flavor of the pizza, the quantity and created art, updated art which are date time objects. We also have the user ID which is just a foreign key to the user table. Now for the order status we have uh, this different status for example when we make an order it is pending it hasn't been attended to. We can also have the order in transit we can have the order delivered. Now we also have the pizza sizes which are small, medium, large and extra large. So we're going to look into how to implement these tables in this video. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll head over to our Visual Studio code and right here I'm going to go to our authentication. So within our authentication is where I'm going to write a different logic for our user creation. So I'm going to head over to models.py within our authentication and then we're going to go ahead and create our custom Django user model. So to do that what I'll do is to import uh, the abstract user class from Django dot uh, from the Django authentication model. So what I'll do is say from Django we are going to go to a contrib, then dot auth, then dot models. We are going to import our abstract user. So this is going to be the model from which we are going to inherit. And then we go ahead and build our custom user model. So we're also going to create a manager that's going to dictate how we're going to create our super users as well as the normal users of our application. So I'm also going to import the base user manager class from Django that's going to help us to do this. So I'll say from Django dot contrib. So in this case, we're going to say it's also going to be from auth. So then I also say dot base user. We are going to go ahead and import our base. So this is going to be base user manager. And after importing this, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we create our custom user model. So the first thing is to create a manager. And the manager is going to basically dictate how our user objects are going to be created. So the first thing I'll do is to create our base user class. So I'll create our custom user manager so i'm going to call it custom user manager so this custom user manager is going to inherit from base user manager and after doing this we're going to override two methods so the methods are going to override are the create user method as well as the create super user method so the first thing i'm going to do is to create our create user method which will take in self which is the object that shall be creating and then it's going to take in the different uh, fields the different required fields so in this case we're going to have the email as well as the password then we shall also supply extra fields so there are going to be those extra fields uh, associated with the user model so we're going to also provide them so we shall provide extra fields so I'm going to pass this for now and we're also going to create our so let me enlarge this so that you guys can see so we're going to also create our super user so I'll call create super user it's also going to take in the same fields so I'm also going to pass this for now now the first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and create our create user field so the create user field the create user 
function or method in this case is one that's going to allow us to create a user object. So it's going to take in the email, the password, and other extra fields as we're going to see. So let me first close this. Okay, now after closing those, that we have our create user field. So within our create user field, we are going to check if the email is now and then raise a value error in case we have not provided an email. So I'm going to import uh, you get lazy text, you get text lazy from, from Django translation so that it tells us to throw this value error. So I'll come at the top of our code and what I'll say is from Django dot utils so I'm going to go to translations so I'm going to import you get text lazy as underscore so what the first thing we're going to be able to check is if we have not provided an email so I'll say if not email what I'll do is to come and basically raise a value error so what I'll say is raise a value error and then what I'll do is to basically give uh, an inappropriate so just like you see uh, an inappropriate argument value of correct type so in this case we don't have an email so I'm going to raise an error in case they haven't provided an email so I'm going to say uh, email should be provided and right after doing this, then the next thing we're going to also do is to normalize our email. So normalizing the email takes in the email that we provided and then turns the domain part of the email into lowercase. So all I'll do is to come and say that our email is going to be equal to self dot normalize email. Then we're going to pass in the email that we provide. Now after doing that, we're going to create our user based on our email and our extra fields. So what we're going to do is to say that our new user is going to be equal to self dot model. So we're going to take in the model that this manager is going to work on, which is going to be our custom user model. And then what we're going to pass in is the email. So we have an email right now. And then the extra fields. So now after passing the email, the next thing we're going to do is to set a password for this currently created user. So we're going to say new user dot set password and then we're going to say that we're going to set the password. So the set password function basically gets the new user and then hashes the password for them and then stores that password in the database. So we're going to create to call the new user dot save to finally save this user to our database now this function is just simply going to return the newly created user and after doing that then let's go ahead and implement our create super user function so the create super user function is going to go ahead and create a super user for us and this is only called in case we use the create user command with python money.py so i'm going to go ahead and do this so the first thing we need to do is to set our extra fields so right here our create user function basically takes care of our required fields but the create super user takes care of both the create that required fields as well as those fields that are, are extra fields so in this case we're going to set our extra fields so the first thing we're going to do is to set so i'll say extra fields dot set default and then we're going to pass in the key so in this case the first extra field we're going to set is, is stuff and then we're going to set this to to true and what this is doing is to set that extra field is staff to true which means that our super user is a staff user so we're also going to set another extra field so i'll say extra field dot set default and then in this case we're going to set the super user then we shall also set it to true so i'm also going to do the same thing for uh is active so i'll say set default sorry for that so this is going to be is active and then i'll go ahead and set this to true now after doing this then what i'm going to do is to check if any of this is left as uh, false then raise a value error so in this case i'll first check so i'll say extra fields dot get is stuff if it's not equal to to true so if i i can say is not true this is basically checking if this boolean is not true 
then what we shall do is trace a value error so i'm going to trace a value error and then this value error is going to take in so i'm going to use you get text lazy and then i'll basically say uh you may set actually what i'm going to do is to say that super user should should have this stuff as true so i'll do the same thing for the other extra fields so i'll say if extra fields dot get is super user is not true i'll raise the same value error so i'll come and say raise and in this case we're going to raise a value error which is that then also going to do the same thing for is active so i'll say if extra fields dot get uh in this case what we're doing going to get is uh is active so what i'll do is come and say is active then it's not true so what we shall do is to raise a value error and then this is going to be uh supervisor should have his active set to true now after checking for all these and setting all these extra fields the next thing we're going to do is basically make use of our create user method to create a super user with the extra fields that we have set uh being equal to true so we shall simply come and return uh self and we shall call our create user method so we're going to call create user then it's going to take in the email and the password as uh, given as parameters right here then plus the extra fields that we have set right here now after doing this then what you're going to do is to basically implement our custom user model so i'm going to come just below our manager and the first thing i'm going to do is to create a class so this class is going to be our user class and it's going to inherit from abstract user so i'm going to say this is going to be from abstract user so after inheriting from abstract user then we're going to go ahead and implement the various fields here so the first thing we're going to do is to implement our username field so our username is going to be models dot car field and then right in here we're going to set our max length so i'm going to say that the max length is going to be equal to 25 and then we shall also have it being unique so we shall say that unique is going to be true then we're also going to provide our email so i'm going to come and say our email is going to be models dot so in this case we're going to call it an email field so in this case we're going to have an email field and then we shall set the max length of this so i mean say max length is going to be equal to so let's say the longest email should be 80 characters long and this is also going to be unique so we're going to set this to true and right after doing this then we're going to go ahead and basically also set our phone number so to use phone numbers we're going to make use of a special package uh, that's called Django phone number field so let's go and look at it so when I type uh, Django phone phone number field so we're going to head over to the documentation so the Django phone number field allows us to implement a phone number field that gives us the ability to to basically check if a phone number is valid or not so this field is specific to only saving phone number fields so let's go ahead and look into how to install this so i'm going to come right here and the installation is as simple as copying this so i'm going to copy this command and then i pull up my terminal and then within our terminal within our virtual environment i'm going to paste this command so this is going to go ahead and install our Django phone number field so after installing our Django phone number field we're going to go ahead and basically implement our phone number so i'll create a field phone number and then this is going to be equal to so i'm going to import the phone number field from Django phone number field so i'll come here and say from Django. actually this is going to be from phone number field then dot model fields so it's going to actually be uh, from model let me check here so this is going to be from phone number field dot model fields then you're going to go ahead and 
uh, this is going to be model field. We are going to import the phone number field. So this is going to be our model field for phone numbers. So this is going to be our um, phone number field. So I'll come and add that field here. So this is going to be our phone. Sorry for this phone number field. So I'll come and basically add this. So here we're going to specify the following. So I'm going to say that we're going to have now as false, meaning that we sh shouldn't have this as now. Then we're also going to have this as unique. So we're going to set it as unique. So after setting this as unique, then we're going to also basically, since we are building on top of our user model, then we do not require to have an extra password field as it's going to be part of our user model. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and basically go and create a field that are actually a method that's going to return string representations of our users. So what I'm going to do here is to come and actually see it's going to be phone number field. If I check here, I have a phone number field. Yeah. So after doing that, then I'll just simply create our str. So I'm going to create a method. It's going to be a under str method. And this under str method is going to take in self. So it's going to simply return a string representation of every user object that we're going to create. So in this case, we're going to just simply return, uh, we're going to write an F string. So this is going to be a user object, and then we're going to simply return self dot email. So after creating our custom user field, we may also need to create a uh, the required fields as well as to set up our email field. Now in this case, we're going to use our email field as our, our, our username field as our email so that you may use our, user, our email to log in into our system. So what I'm going to do is to set our username field. So this is going to be our username field. And this is going to be uh, our email. Then I'm also going to set, uh, so this is going to be email. Then I'm also going to go ahead and set our required fields. Now, these required fields are the ones that we shall require a user to provide in case we are signing up a user. So I'll come and say required fields. And this is going to be a list of required fields. Now, in this case, we're going to provide the username as well as we're going to also provide uh, our phone number. So I'll come and say phone number. Now, after doing this, the next thing we're going to do is to basically go ahead and uh, migrate this into our database. So every time we create a model with Django, we go ahead and migrate this into our database so that we, we, mig we create a migration for it and then we migrate that migration into our database. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'm going to pull up my terminal. And the first thing I'm going to do is to run the command python3 manage your py and then make migration it's going to be make migrations and then I point to the specific app that contains the migration that you want to create so in this case it's going to be authentication so after doing this I'm going to press enter so we have models not defined actually what we did is uh, this is supposed to import models so I'll say from Django dot db we are going to import our models so i need to come and run this so when you run authentication so right here we have a we have a specific error that's saying reverse accessor for authentication dot user dot groups clashes with reverse accessor for user dot groups so to fix this error what you're going to do is to go ahead and set up our auth user model within our settings so the auth user model setting basically specifies which kind of uh, user model that you're going to use which kind of custom user model you're going to use so i'm going to head over to our settings dot py that's within our pizza project so within our settings, I'm going to go and add one important setting. So that important setting is going to be our auth user model. And then we set that up is to write the app in which we have our default user model. So that is our authentication app. And then we go ahead and specify which model is going to act as our custom user model. So I'll say dot user. 
So when I save this, I'm going to run our migrations again. So when I run, I'll make migrations. So in this case, it's going to go ahead and create our user model migration. So our migration is located within our authentication and then within our migrations. So if you go and look into our migrations file right here, we have the different specified. So right here, as you can observe, we have the different fields that you specified as well as other extra fields that you specified in our create user function. So when I close this, we're going to go ahead and write this onto our database. So the first thing I'm going to do is to run python3 money.py and then migrate. So this is going to go ahead and uh, basically migrate our database. So right here we have uh, uh, migration one initial, which basically, uh, which is uh, inconsistent. So it's basically clashing with our initial migrations. So to get rid of that, the beauty with uh, Django is we can use an escalate database for for our development. So what I can do is to actually go ahead and remove our database. I'm going to delete our database and recreate it again. So to migrate our database, I'll just run python3 money.py and then migrate. So this is going to go ahead and create our database tables once again. So right now we've been able to create our custom user model. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create our admin. So I'll go ahead and say python3 money.py and then I'll go ahead and run this with uh, create super user. So this is going to prompt us. So we have our email. So I'm going to provide our email. So I'm going to provide the email as admin uh, at app.com. And then we're also going to provide our username. So the username is going to be admin. So I'll provide a phone number. So let's say 256-70-9984. Actually, it's going to be 709-984-567. So I'll also provide a password. And then go ahead as well, provide another password. So right now we've provided a password that is too common, but I'll say yes. So this is going to go ahead and create our super user. So to create, uh, to access our admin dashboard, you're going to actually, Django comes with an admin dashboard that you shall use to create, uh, read, update, and delete our model. So I'm going to access that with running our server. So I'll run Python 3 manage.py, run server. And then right here, this is going to go ahead and run our server. So I'll go to localhost 8000. So when I go back to our browser, which is Chrome. So in this case, I'm going to go to localhost 8000 slash admin. And then this will give us access to our admin. So I'm going to log in with the credentials admin at app.com and our password, which is password123. So when I log in, this is going to give us to access to our admin dashboard. So after doing this, we are going to go ahead and basically register our user model so that we can be able to control our user accounts on our admin dashboard. So to do that, I'm going to go to our Visual Studio code. And then within our Visual Studio code, I'm going to go to our admin module within our authentication app. So within admin, the first thing I'm going to do is to basically admin to, to register our model so i'll import our model which is our custom user model so i'll say from uh, dot models meaning from the models module within our current folder i'm going to go ahead and import uh, the user model so right after importing the user model i'm going to go ahead and register it with admin dot site dot register and then i'll go ahead and register the user model. So when I save this, our development server is running and head over to our to our Django admin. So when I refresh, we now have access to our custom user model. So if I check for the current users, we only have the admin user created. So we can see the various information that the user has. So in this video, we've been able to set up our custom user and set up our database as well. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and create our folder 
model so thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video all you can do is to leave a like uh, please comment on what you feel and thank you for watching see you in the next video bye